the A145 um, square wave is going to sound very much on off on off because it has only one of two positions so when I patch this we should hear our filter on and then off and right there it's very slow so let's speed that up a little bit so we can get it there it's in the on position now the off on position now the off so if I bring my frequency up Get a faster version of that. Okay, let me adjust my resonance setting. Just to change the sound a little bit. It almost sounds like a wood block. Okay, I'm going to unpatch that. So now we're back to our, our filter sound, just straight up filtered sound. Go into CV2, starting at the top, inverted saw, CV2. And bring that all the way down. So that's basically our dry signal that we had a second ago. If I bring that up, you can adjust how much of the modulation is being fed to the frequency there. Still fairly different than what we had earlier. Frequency on the LFO is all the way up. Well, now it is. It was almost all the way up. Let's bring it down a little bit. Just hear what that sounds like a little bit. to our filter triangle wave. So definitely a, a nice change to the sound coming from the standard VCO via the filter. And of course you can always choose somewhere in the middle. You can blend the two to get a little more varied sound, a little fuller. 
Okay, let's go on to the sine wave. So I'm going to patch right into the sine wave. It's with the frequency at about 3 o'clock. And bring the resonance up just a little bit. frequency down okay that's our sine wave now we're going to move down to triangle wave let's bring the frequency up down so we're getting the idea we are still in CV1 um, but I think we've kind of uh, exhausted kind of just the single modulation patching capabilities that we've we've kind of demonstrated with the same waves going into CV1 a little bit of CV2 um, so now Let's go into what we usually do and show you how to patch into both. So we're going to patch an inverted saw into CV1. And then I'm going to take a sine wave from the same place. And I'm going to patch into CV2. Let me bring CV2 all the way down to where I do that. Now I'm going to bring it up. So there we have two modulation signals being added together. Definitely is a slightly different sound coming from there. Let's bring the frequency up of our LFO. Let's bring it all the way to the top. And at this point, you know, we got some pretty neat cool modulation going on here. We can adjust the resonance a little. Until we find a sound that we are particularly fond of. So let's try two different waveforms. Let's go with a triangle going into CV2. And I'm going to change that. Let's go to sine wave and triangle wave. Quite as fun, I don't think, as what we had a second ago. Let's try a uh, saw. I'll bring the frequency down a little bit. Start bringing our frequency down just a little bit. down even lower than that.
first part of our little demo here involving the A101-2 low-pass gate acting as a filter. Uh, we showed a little bit of modulation going into CV1, little modulation going into CV2 by itself, and then a little modulation going into both. We reviewed a little bit of the features, such as the resonance setting, how that can kind of affect your sound, and then the cutoff, of course. So coming up next, we're going to be talking about the low-pass filter over here on the right. We're going to be going into a little more depth on the Dofer A120 low-pass filter um, and show you how this one is different specifically to this one. So stay tuned.